continuing with the design of riveted joints today's lecture is procedure for design of boiler joints basically for any ordinary riveted joint i dr balraj singh brad from yadwindra college of engineering talwandi sabo am presenting the lecture on the topic let us first discuss the efficiencies of a boiler joints or even simple joints if we take lap joint when we design for a single riveted lap joint efficiency comes out to be 45 to 60 maximum 63.3% so if a joint is required with maximum efficiency of 63.3 we can go for single riveted but says efficiency required is more we will have to opt for double riveted lap joint efficiency range of 63 to 70 maximum 77.5 say still we have to go for 80% maximum efficiency we will go for triple riveted lap joint with the range of 72 to 80 but if we want to go beyond 86.6 Since to 90, of course we have to move to butt joints. Butt joints with double steps have higher efficiencies. For example, single riveted butt joint has an efficiency of 55 to 60, maximum 63.3. It is same to overlap, but lower lowest value is high. Then double riveted lap joint we have efficiency of 70 to 83% whereas in case of lap joint it was maximum up to 70 it starts from 70 and goes up to 86.6% in when we use triple riveted butt joint we can attain an efficiency 80 to 90 maximum 95% whereas in case of triple riveted lap joint range is 70 to 80 maximum 86.6% with quadruple riveted butt joints we can get efficiencies 85 to 94 say 98.1% so we can design the joints keeping in mind what is the efficiency requirement and then we will select the type of joint which suits our applications but specifically for the design of boilers maximum efficiency is 85% according to indian boiler regulations we can't take more than this simply summarizing for higher higher efficiencies we go for butt joints for lower efficiencies we go for lap joints now in the boiler joints usually the boilers are cylindrical in shape and they are made up from different plates joined together forming some plates join along a longitudinal joint and this horizontal line shows the longitudinal joint some plates join along the circumference so the joints which are made along the circumference are known as circumferential joints so we have a mix of uh, a zigzag of horizontal circumferential horizontal circumferential joints in the formation of boiler joints now what we observe is if we refer to the chapter of design of thin shells in machine design or in, from solid mechanics book we find that the longitudinal stress which is acting along the axis of a cylindrical shell is denoted as sigma l and the stress along the horizontal longitudinal joint is sigma h h stands for hoop stress now if 
this is a thin shell thin shell means diameter d inner diameter of the shell to the thickness of the shell if this ratio d by t is greater than or equal to 20 we take the shell to be thin shell we design considering it to be thin shell some books define it that this theory is applicable for d by t greater than 50 of course if we are taking d by t ratio greater than 20 we are on the safe side safe side means in the thin shells we omit the variation of stress circumferential stress from the inner radius to the outer radius and the value length of the longitudinal stress as from the derivations are sigma longitudinal is pi pressure inside the shell diameter of, of the shell by 40 and the stress acting on the longitudinal joints is known as hoop stress or it is acting along the circumference direction of stress is along the circumference circumferential joint or it is tangential to the circumference so tangential stress three names are there this these come out to be PID shell by 2t from these two relations we observe that hoop stress is double than the longitudinal stress so what it means is the chance of if tensile strength is allowable tensile strength is given chance of a failure of a thin cylindrical pressure vessel along the longitudinal joint is more than what is there in the circumferential joint so what we do we have more efficiency strength requirement along longitudinal joint than the circumferential joint so for higher efficiency of the joint we select longitudinal joint to be a butt joint and circumferential joint having lower values of longitudinal stresses to be a left joint to save the energy time and money so simply in the boiler joints longitudinal joints are butt joints circumferential joints are lap joints in today's lecture we will be focusing on the design of longitudinal joints which are butt joints now if the design is a an ordinary riveted joint then thickness of the plates we can calculate from strength requirement or it will be given in the design but in the case of th boilers thickness of boiler shell we can find from the relation of hoop stress we know hoop stress is maximum stress it is pi pressure on inside the shell d diameter of the shell by 2t so from thin shell theory this should be less than or at the most equal to the liable tensile strength of the material now taking the limiting case of pi d shell upon 2t less than or equal to sigma t we find t t will be pi d shell upon 2 sigma t now we take eta efficiency of the joint into account what kind of joint we have selected so according to that joint if joint is of lower efficiency thickness we have, will have to take more if joint is of higher efficiency it is less usually we select butt joint with reasonably high efficiency one two three mm corrosion or allowance is given in, in no case especially in boilers according to indian boiler regulations of course 
in ordinary applications thickness is less minimum thickness for the boilers is 7 mm so thick once thickness of the plates is known we will move ahead with the test now diameter of rivet hole it is d which is d is greater than the rivet diameter by 1.5 if the rivet hole is up to 25 mm size or or it is greater than by or greater than by rivet dia 2 mm so this is the hole dia d here in the design d is the hole dia or in all the calculations it will have to be taken in mm only in the design it is not necessary to use si units sometimes we make use of empirical lesions so units we have to take care according to the lesion now when the thickness is equal to or more than 8 mm we go for Arnwin's formula which states that d is ranging from 6.0500 t to 7.0500 t this is Arnwin's empirical formula again t once we know it is put in mm dear students please don't make a mistake of putting the thickness in meters and d will also come out to be in mm for structural joints we can make use of this relation for structures we can take lower value of d now once we have calculated d we have to check that d should be more than the thickness of the plates in no case it should be less than the thickness of the plates so minimum diameter it is suppose dia of the rivet is less and thickness of plate is more then the punch may get crushed during the punching of holes in the plate according to ibr factor of safety is around four for structural joints we may take lower factor of safety of about two in the calculations to find out the liable tensile and shear strength of the material so for higher thickness plates having thickness more than 8 mm d is calculated by Arnwin's empirical formula we need not go into any other calculations but if thickness of plate is less than 8 mm then to decide the dia suppose we can we have three options a hole of lesser dia a hole of medium dia and a hole of larger dia what we observe is thickness is already quite less it is a thin shell so so if we take a small size pin of course its shear strength is less than the crushing strength because we know tau is usually less than sigma c crushing strength and in this case though and dia is also less than plate or near to plate so shear strength will be less than the crushing strength but suppose we have selected in the design a larger rivet hole dia of course we are increasing ps but thin plate may get crushed 
or thin plate may crush the rivet because d t product is less is less uh, and even though sigma c is more but dt is quite less than the area of the pi by 4 d square basically dt is less than pi by 4 d square it, though tau is also less but this results in a crushing of the rivet so in first case rivet has a tendency to get sheared in the third case rivet has a tendency to get crushed we get strike a balance at two so in the design calculations we equate shear strength to crushing strength per unit pitch for single riveted lap or butt joints we have this relation crushing area projected area dt into crushing strength and this is the shear area into tau but if we have double or triple riveted lap joints or butt joints we have to take proper care of k how many rivets are in double shear how many rivets are in double shear and how many rivets are in single shear we have to take care and accordingly we will be finding out shear strength equating with the crushing strength here also we will take care how many rivets are in crushing z3 z1 z2 so we have to take care as we discussed already and this and now t is known sigma c is known we tau is known we will be determining the rivet hole diagram so this is the design procedure to determine the rivet hole diagram from the standard table as discussed in the earlier lectures we will select the standard rivet size and standard rivet hole size and we will proceed with the design of rivet joint now once the thickness of the plates and rivet hole diameter is known we will determine pitch of the rivets now t thickness of the plate we know the rivet hole dia we know only thing is the spacing we have one option another option of selecting p this is p say dash p double dash we have three options low pitch medium pitch and high pitch so in the first case when the pitch is less rivet hold is already finalized the distance between the two rivets is less so this area which is getting teared is quite less so we know, know that tearing strength to tearing is quite less than than the strength to shearing per unit pitch in the case third case though pitch with increase in pitch the area which is getting teared is more pt is quite more but the ps shear strength of the rivets will be less and rivet will get sheared so we have to strike the balance what we do we find out the tearing strength and equate it with the shearing strength to de determine the p so in the present case we have single rivet of shear area pi by 4 d square multiplied by tau 
equate it with p minus t t sigma t t is no, known sigma t is known tau is known d is known p will be calculated if we have we have double lifted triple lifted or butt joints also with the double butt steps so we take care of number of rivets per unit pitch which are getting sheared and also how many rivets are getting sheared so relation gets altered as we discussed and we are able to find out the pitch of the rivets once we have calculated p as we discussed in the previous slide what we do we know the p we have to check the range of the pitch usually pitch for structural joints we can roughly take to be 3d we can directly take 3d find out the different strengths and find out sharing efficiencies roughly we will arrive at a uh, quite a good design but for exact design we will find p say for boiler joints first let us for boiler joints we ensure that p is minimum 2d 2d to to allow for the riveting we have to provide certain minimum space between the heads for dies to operate and for riveting to be done so it should not be less than 2d and maximum pitch is for boilers is found from the nations given in the tables for the lap joints for single dou double and taper riveted efficiency a maximum pitch is 1.31t plus 41.28 for double riveted 2.60 for triple lifted 3.470 we observe that this this constant is same t we put in mm not in meters take care of this if we have butt joint with double butt steps we have the relation for maximum pitch single lifted we can go for higher pitch in case of double lifted butt joints it is 3.50 for triple riveted we can still go to higher pitch of 60 plus 41.28 because when it is single riveted we go for smaller pitch because if by mistake we have taken pitch higher than the this maximum value then there is a chance of leakage of the fluid between the plates because of a higher pitch to make a joint tight and leak proof we limit the maximum p to the values as given in the table for structural joints minimum pitch is kept to be 3d usually 3d plus 5 mm of course we calculate as we done in the previous slide and maximum should be 60t so there is no requirement and no much problem of leakage of course if even if a structure joint if it is not retaining certain fluid but still if pitch is too large it can retain some moisture and there is a danger of corrosion to the riveted joint so if suppose in the calculations p is greater than p maximum then if p comes out to be greater than p maximum we take pitch to the maximum limit p maximum if p comes out to be less than p minimum we keep it p minimum so if once pitch is known we will find out distance between the rows back pitch pb for structural joints if zigzag riveting it is 0.6 times p p is to be taken in meter mm not in meters 
Similarly, D in all the relations is to be taken in mm, not in the meters. And note that P is the pitch of the rivets in the outer rows. And it sometimes uh, rivets are missing in the one alternate rivet is missing in the outer row. Then the pitch in the inner rows is less. But for calculations, P is the outer row. For chain, 0.8. So, rough estimate for any ordinary joint is this. Back pitch is 0.6p or 0.8p. But if we have boilers and if we have equal number of rivets in each row, it may be a lap or butt joint. For zigzag, we take 0.33p plus 0.67d. And for chain, it is 2d. We take care of the rivet hold also. But if for boilers having half number of rivets in the outer rows, if inner rows are chain, then distance between outer rows and the inner rows is greater of the two values 0.33p plus 0.67d or 2d. We will calcul we'll calculate and get and distance between the inner rows is 2d. If the inner rows are zigzag, distance between the outer and the inner is 0.2p plus 1.15d and distance between the inner zigzag rows is 0.165p plus 0.67. So in using this table, we will be able to calculate the band. Then the thickness of butt straps. If we are using butt straps, two butt straps of equal width, and if it is a single butt strap, thickness is T1, 1.125 T, ordinary joint, say chain rivet. For double butt straps, thickness of each, each butt strap is reduced to from 1.125 it is reduced to 0.625 t for ordinary chain rivet. if every alternate rivet is omitted we multiply this term by this term p minus t by 2 p p minus t by p minus 2 t. similarly for double butt step to arrive at the thickness of the steps if we are using butt steps of unequal widths, we use wide step on the inside, narrow step on the outside, inner step is 0.75 T and outer is same 0.625 T. So we make use of this table and determine the thickness of butt steps in case of butt joints. Margins we already discussed in the previous lectures is the distance between the gauge line, gauge line, this gauge line and the edge for both the plates. And for boiler joints we usually keep margin to be 1.5D. If we ensure minimum this much margin then we prevent the failure of plates, tearing failures of plates at the edges mm -hmm. as well as shearing of the plates at the edges. For structural joints, minimum is 1.5D but if forces are acting normal to the edge, for structure joints we can keep it minimum to be 2D to make the joint stronger. With this, we have discuss the procedure for the design of any ordinary joint and boiler joint in case of boiler joint we have discussed the longitudinal joint which is a butt joint in the next lecture we discuss the design of circumferential joint for the boiler joint thanks